Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Independent Author Podcast. I'm Tom Kranz, and I really appreciate you downloading uh, this episode, as I have appreciated uh, all the people who have listened to my past episodes, and I hope you'll keep doing that. Uh, this time, instead of uh, hearing me yammer on, uh, I've uh, invited uh, a good friend of mine who was also an independent author uh, who just uh, published his second book, uh, Mike Archer. Uh, is a career journalist. Uh, he worked for, I guess, 30, 35 years in TV news in the Philadelphia market uh, with a, s- a small detour in the clothing industry. Uh, and then back to that, uh, to that, uh, to that career. Uh, like me, I was in the TV news business for 25, 30 years. And then I also took a detour into the assisted living industry where I actually stayed for 12 years. Um, Mike has uh, just released his second book of short stories. It's called Living with Humans, Stories of Each Other. Uh, and this follows uh, his first short story book published, uh, was it a year ago or 2019, Mike? 2019. Right. Uh, the Road of Life. Uh, and uh, Mike's, uh, Mike's take is basically looking at, you know, human emotions, human, you know, the things that humans do, uh, and he explores kind of like the consequences of that. What I like about this book is that uh, the characters in these stories, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing some, if not all of them, are based on your own experiences. They are at a certain point in their life where they look back at what they did and try to judge, uh, you know, whether it was good or bad and how things turned out. First of all, Mike, before we do that, uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, just give us kind of a thumbnail sketch of, of where you were before, uh, before your retirement and before you started writing for real. Well, the last, uh, I guess, um, 14 years, uh, I worked at uh, KYW TV in Philadelphia as the uh, managing editor. Um, And I left there in uh, 2015, um, you know, having spent my whole career um, in TV news in New York, Detroit, and Philadelphia. And then when I retired, you know, the challenge is, okay, what are you going to do now? Uh, to keep yourself occupied and uh, really to keep your brain sharp. And I had been writing, you know, for TV news my whole career, and I thought, well, that's something I know how to do, at least in a certain style I know how to do it. And I thought, well, this may be a way to kind of expand my horizons and take, uh, take a shot at trying to write fiction. And, uh, you know, I thought about a novel, and I thought, oh, man, it'll take forever to write a novel. And um, so I thought, well, why don't I just start writing some short stories? And um, some of those are based on real-life experiences, and some of them um, you're just kind of made up, but kind of based on, you know, stories I've covered over the years. Um, You know, you get ideas from every place. And um, so... Uh, you know, t- took a couple of years to, to do it, but it, it gives you great satisfaction and it kind of um, forces you to do something. You kind of give yourself a deadline, which we're all used to having been in the TV news business. So, you know, that's what got me into it. And uh, and I had plenty of time to do it and I didn't want to sit around and do nothing. <laughs> gotcha. Did you ever, I mean, while you were coming up in the business, Did you ever have kind of a dream to write things other than, you know, 20 second voiceovers and whatnot? Was that always in the back of your mind or didn't it really gel until after you you left the business? Uh, I can't say I was actively thinking about it while I was working, but I was always an avid reader and uh, particularly of nonfiction uh, books. Um, And, um, you know, I never thought about it. I think, you know, you're so busy working and doing your uh, what you're supposed to be doing every day, you kind of don't think that far in advance. So I guess I really got the urge to do it, you know, once I retired and had the time to do it. I got you. And you also write a blog, the Archer, the Archer Journal, right? Yes. And yes. you do that just when the mood strikes you? Or are you on a schedule with that? Yeah. Is it, you wait till Actually, something pisses you off enough to write about it? I actually started doing that first. I really started that just a couple of weeks after I retired. And, um, and that's more topical. It's about journalism, politics, the use of language, and then even what I call life stories, just feature stories 
based on experiences I have or stuff that I observe. And so I started doing that. And uh, I was, I guess in the beginning, I was churning out probably three or four pieces a month. And um, I guess now I average probably about two, maybe three pieces a month. Uh, and it, it's generated a pretty good following. Um, you know, there's probably close to 200 pieces on there now. Wow. And, you know, I've had months where I've had, uh, you know, anywhere from eight or 900 visits to 13 or 1400 visits in a month. Wow. That's pretty good. Um, have you found when, so one, one thing that I, I find and struggle with pretty much every time I write is you spent your entire life learning how to write like complex stories in four sentences, basically, right? You've learned that you, you had to discipline yourself to write things in terms of, you know, how long does it take to read this? 20 seconds, 15, 30, and writing even reporter stories down to like a minute or a minute and a half. And now you have the option, you know, you have the actually the necessity of writing more expansively, more descriptively, more from the heart, maybe. Did you find that hard to do um, or talk about that a little bit? I found that to be a challenge because you're right. We were trained to think um, economically, uh, you know, short sentences, get to the point, uh, just put in the important stuff. So when you're writing, as you know, when you're writing fiction, uh, it's okay. How do I develop the plot? How do I develop these characters? Um, you know, how much does the reader want to know about this character? And so that, you know, becomes a real challenge to almost lay out in advance. Of what's the story going to be? Some idea of what the plot's going to be. And then, you know, figuring out uh, the characters and how much you're going to reveal about the characters. And then I think the next challenge after that is, okay, once you've got this character in your head, uh, then you got to bring them to life. You know, how, how do they speak? How do they express themselves? Um, so that becomes... Uh, you know, a real challenge, uh, which I think I've gotten better at. Uh, although sometimes when I show the stories to my wife, she says, I need, I need more emotion in here. Yeah. I need more emotion. <laughs> uh, so, well, that's the hardest part, right? I mean, revealing yourself is difficult, you know, under any circumstances, really. Yes. And particularly when you're writing, because some of the stories I've written uh, are, you know, autobiographical in that. They're based on real events, you know, in my family or in my life. And yes, you you find yourself thinking, well, how much of this do I really want to put out there? Right, right. What uh, so in living with humans, um, those stories are in. All right, what stories? How many, if any, of those stories are autobiographical? How many well, did you take from real life? Uh, well, um, two uh, were based on real life. Um, the uh, story called Lonely Monday, which is about the, uh, well, first about the death of my father and the effect it had on my mother ah. and, my, and my relationship with my mother um, during the, my father died 14 years before she died. Um, so it's a story about what I went through uh, dealing with her and, you know, what that did to our relationship. Um, so that was based on my own experience and pretty closely. And the end of the story, uh, I made up a bit to make a point. Uh, so that was a little tough to write. Uh, but it was, you know, you kind of get it out of your system and you feel better about it, even though, you know, the experience was not great. Yeah. Um, and for the record, your father was Nick Archer, correct? Yes. And that was, he was, uh, he was a fairly well-known journalist in New York City during his day, correct? Yeah, he was a, a vice president at, at ABC News. Okay. And, um, it, you know, the story started, he died very suddenly uh, when he was 74 years old, uh, you know, at home. And, uh, you know, my mother's life was basically built around him. They did everything together. Um, so... The impact on her was was very serious, as you can imagine. Sure, yeah. Um, so the story is about my relationship with her in all those years after he died, and 
what happened to her, what happened to our relationship. Uh, in, in the other story that's kind of autobiographical is um, called Mick and Mary, which is based on my uh, grandparents. Oh, okay. Uh, my, my mother's parents who are uh, immigrants from Ireland. Um, and the reason I wrote that is that my mother, my grandfather <clears throat> uh, was a basically an alcoholic. And um, my mother never really came totally clean with me about him. Mm. And he died when I was about five years old. So I had no memory of him other than what she told me. Right. And I found out in years later, you know, more about what kind of a guy he is and uh, the impact he had on his, my mother and her siblings. Uh, a reminder to everybody, uh, Living with Humans, Stories of Each Other is available right now on Amazon.com as both a paperback and, uh, and a download. And Mike's first book, uh, Road of Life, also available in both formats. Uh, Mike, we'll be talking again, I'm sure. I wish you a lot of luck with both these books. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll see you down the road. Thanks, Tom. Pleasure. Right, Take care.